I'm back today with another exciting home assistant tutorial. I've never been so excited in my life, like ever, on YouTube anyway. This is Frigate. It is an add-on for home assistant, and it is the best add-on ever. I just, I mean, just like last night, for instance, I woke up at 4 a.m. and I'm thinking, of how many automations I could do with this new add-on. It's just crazy. When you add this onto Home Assistant, it's like an AI you just add on and make all of your dumb cameras instantly smart. Let's take a look at my cameras. This is by default. When you click on events, you can see that it easily picks up a person the duration of how long the person is there in the room what is the probability that it is a person? Here she is walking backward and still recognize that yes, this is a person. So in some way that this is so much better than motion sensor because motion sensor, if you're sitting still, it won't think there's a person. And that's a problem when you're watching movie or when I'm eating uh, dinner and I'm sitting still most of the time because I'm looking at my phone and suddenly the lights come out because the system thinks I'm not there anymore. But with this on, with this turn on, I'm there because you can see that I am there. So how do we add this in? First you go into supervisor, you go on to the add-on store, click on this three dots up here repository add in the repository from frigate at the github copy click here paste oops click on add I already have it so it doesn't do anything for me but if you see it, click on add it so it adds onto your system. Once you've added it to your system, click on it. Check the box, start on boot. Show in sidebar if you want. Protection mode, you can leave it on or off, doesn't matter. Don't click on start yet because you have to set up the uh, file. And let me show you what the file looks like now. All you have to do is go into your configuration folder, click on frigate, and make sure that this is frigate.yml, not yaml. There's a difference. Yaml would not work. I'm going to um, have a copy of it in my Google Drive so that you can see where it is and you can just copy everything. Open it up. The detector, I'm using a uh, laptop, so the detector is just a CPU type. Your MQTT host and the port. This is my IP address for the host. This is my user. This is my password. This is one of my cameras. The camera is an Amcrest 4K resolution. So even though the camera is 4K, I'm only using a sub-channel of it that is very low resolution at 640 by 480. You can tell it is a sub-channel because this is the type of sub-channel and a channel type. This is my user ID and my password. The IP address of my Amcrest on my network. Remember, the Amcrest camera has to be connected to your network and not to the back of the NVR itself. So using this uh, sub-channel, it is very low resolution. And the width is 640 and the height is 480. If I use the full uh, 4K resolution, it will create a lot of stress for my system because again, this is like an i3 laptop running this uh, frigate and it is it won't be good. So be sure to set up the resolution that's good for your uh, system. After you're done with resolution this frames per second you can get this number from your VLC so open VLC up media 
open network stream, paste it in, click play, click on tool, media information, click on codec and you'll see that the resolution is here as well as the frame rate is here. This I left everything as default, I didn't touch anything. This is the settings for the uh, D camera. It is $25 and it has been hacked, so there's no way it's going to report anything back to any D server out there. Use this uh, format to get the RTSP address. It is your um, user ID, password, IP address, and a channel. This is actually a high resolution channel. You can see that uh, it's 19 by 20 and 1080p. There is also a lower resolution channel, but we're using high channel for now just for fun, just to see how much it takes up the uh, CPU bandwidth. Everything is the same as well as before. And that's it. This is the very, very basic minimum settings for your Frigate YAML file. So once you hit the save button for your Frigate YAML file, click on start. Click on open web UI. If you see a green screen, that means there's something wrong with your YAML file or you just need to restart Home Assistant. The events will start flowing in as it detects a person. Now, if you're greedy like me and you want something even more and better, click on configuration, click on integrations, So that way you can add the Frigate add-on in here as well. This lets you see more uh, entities. So here you can see I have my backyard cameras, all these kind of stuff, all these kind of goodies. This is so incredible. It's amazing. When a person is detected and how many person is detected, etc., etc. So how do we add this in? Just go to this address, go to this folder, make sure that you have everything copied from this folder and put that into your configuration folder. So take a look at all these files, copy them all, put them into your Home Assistant configuration, custom components. Create a folder if you haven't already called Frigate and paste all those files into this folder. After you copy all the files in the folder, restart your Home Assistant, click on Add Integration, find Frigate, and add it here. I already have it, so of course this is going to give me an error. Now, I'm using a cheap Dell laptop i3 processor and look with just two cameras the CPU usage is 3.7 because it's not detecting anything there's no movement there's no people there's no, no person moving around at this time but if there are a person moving around at this time then the CPU can go all the way to like 80 percent just to analyze that video footage of who's there and who's not there the best way to use this system is to actually buy a dedicated chip that can do the video processing. So um, my best advice is to get a Google Coral chip. Um, I just placed the order and I'm getting it soon for 25 bucks. Plus shipping is about seven bucks, so it comes out to be about thirty-five dollars with after taxes. I did saw mine jump all the way to eighty percent, and this jump high as well. So if you're going to use this with multiple cameras and even high resolution, uh, maybe you should get something a lot better than an i3 processor. So what are some of the ways that we can use this? Well, um, for instance, I live in a shady neighborhood and the backyard is very close to each other and intruders can easily jump over the fence and jump into the backyard and go through my house and whatever. Another thing that you use it for is to detect cars. 
I believe Frigate can analyze data to see how many cars there are and it would be nice if I can go home and five minutes before arriving home Frigate will let me know if there's a car parked in front of my house or not. If there is a car then I'll drive somewhere to find a parking space but if there is no car then I can go ahead and drive there and park right in front of my house. That would be sweet. Let me know what automations that you are dying to use this for in the comment section because I'm really curious how this is going to be played out for everybody. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comment section below.